Okay, so uh, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, functions, and hopefully uh, someone at some point has kind of taught you the idea of what a function is or what a function does in the context of math. So just as a review, if uh, we have f uh, that is a function of polynomials, uh, so let, let's say if f of x, this is usually how we write functions, is equal to, uh, let's say, x squared plus uh, x plus 1 or something like that. Hopefully this is coming through. Uh, this would mean that if, if you wanted to find f of a, this is kind of sideways, but we'll roll with it. Uh, that you take this a here and you plug it into any place where you see an x in the right hand part of the equation that defines your function. So for example, if f, when we're talking about f here, uh, we mean x squared plus x plus 1, then f of a is a squared plus a plus 1. So you can define your f to be pretty much any uh, sum or product or uh, any anything you know that you can say, that you can express using symbols that you can understand. For the most part, you can define a function to use it. So for example, you could have uh, a trigonometric function, so sine of x is equal to f of x. You could have f of x is equal to uh, sine of x plus x squared plus x plus 1. Uh, we can have, using exponential functions, you could have like e to the power of sine of x plus x squared plus x plus 1. You could define f to be any of these things. Okay? Just that, that's just as a review of when we're talking about functions. We can, we can define these functions to be anything uh, as long as we're consistent in our use of what we define our functions to be. Uh, and when we want to find f of a of this f here, and that would be e sine of a plus a squared plus a plus 1. And remembering when we're dealing with exponential functions, this stuff up here this all pertains to the e. Uh, I know we, we didn't talk too much about how to kind of keep track of what belongs to uh, what exponential, but we just want to put little brackets around this one to keep us from being confused because e to the sine of x plus x squared plus x plus 1 is not the same thing as e to the power of sine x plus x squared plus x plus 1. Notice I draw these ones, these x's, a little bit bigger uh, to keep them from getting confused uh, from when I draw them up here. The reason is, is that we're taking e to the power of uh, the sine of x plus x squared plus 1. What this means is we're multiplying e, you can think of it as multiplying e times itself. One, two, three, sine of x plus x squared plus x plus one times. Whereas this up here is just adding e multiplied by itself sine of x times plus x squared plus x plus 1. So these two are probably going to be different. Uh, and we, we, could, we could find out how different. It's not all that important for the purposes of this video. But just as a review, uh, there are these these exponential 
functions, there's functions that you can define. So the, what I want to get across in this video though, uh, is that there's a special kind of function called an inverse function. And you've probably seen a bunch of these inverse functions already, uh, although maybe not uh, spoken about in terms of functions, and maybe not spoken about in terms of inverse functions. So how an inverse function works is if you have one function, you can put on the inside of that function another function. Let's call this middle one g. And when we evaluate or try to understand what this function equals to, so let's say we take our first function g of x is equal to x squared and f of x we're going to equal to the square root of x. So f of g of x is going to be, well, what is f of x? f of x is the square root of whatever is on the inside, x. Whatever is on the inside here is g. So let's go square root of, what is g? x squared. So f of g of x is the square root of x squared, at least as long as what we mean by f of x is the square root of x, and what we mean by g of x is x squared. Remember, we can we can define our functions to be whatever we need them to be in our current context. So, for example, if we're doing a, a, a some math homework, usually uh, we're going to be asked or given f and g, and then asked to do something with them, or Maybe we're going to have to come up with some f and g to, to fit something we're being asked to do. So in this case, what we want to be looking for is this inverse function. So just keep that in mind. So what what is the square root of x squared? Well, that is just x. So what the square root means is uh, x, or the, the thing inside, two things multiply together to be that thing. So for example here, x times x is x squared. So the square root of x squared is x. So f of g of x is equal to x. Okay? Now, what's interesting here is this x is the same thing as these two x. It's just this, the, a single variable x. So you could say f of g of x equals to x, what we can say about f and g is they are inverses of each other. So for example, we could say uh, not all inverses work this way, but we could, if we wanted to, find out what g of f, g of, f of x is. So let's do this the other way. So g is x squared, so whatever f of x is, g of f of x is f of x squared. f of x is the square root of x. So we replace f of x by the square root of x, and then we have just uh, an equ uh, equation in terms of x at this point, so we can just say what's the square root of x squared? Well that is just x. A lot of inverses will work this way. There are, I seem to remember, uh, some that kind of work the other way in terms of it'll work one way but not the other. Uh, but in any case, uh, what we want to notice here is that there's a special kind of function that's related to another function such that f of minus 1 of that function is equal to x. And this we're going to call an inverse function. And a lot of functions that you will have dealt with by now have inverses. So for example, what is the inverse of 1 over x? Well, it turns out that is just itself. So this is kind of a funny little function because it's got its own inverse. Let's see if we can check that f of g of x is equal to 1 over x. 
f of 1 over x, really, because we just replaced g by, what is g? 1 over x. And so this is going to be 1 over 1 over x. Multiply the top and the bottom by x. This is x over x over x equal to x over 1 equal to x. So if you remember where we started, that is equal to f of g of x. And anytime we have this, we have g is inverse of x. Okay. So, uh, so we, we've seen now at least two examples of this, this inverse thing. Uh, so what you could do as you go throughout your the rest of your life is start looking anytime you see a function, see if you can figure out what is the inverse of that function. And if you've figured out the inverse of that function, sometimes it'll be a function that you know about. It's easy to say, easy to express. Other times it's going to be really hard to express. Don't work too hard necessarily on finding it, but just work a little bit on seeing if you can find the inverse of the functions that you found in your life. So for example, uh, one thing you can do is uh, if you are doing a lot of statistics uh, and just keep keeping track of things that happen to correlate well with each other. We haven't really talked about correlation all that much yet. Uh, but if you keep in track, if you're keeping track of how things are related to each other, uh, and you're keeping kind of like a, a journal or a log uh, of some kind, uh, sometimes you'll be able to express how one is related to the other uh, in some sort of an equation. Uh, but what you can do is you can see if you can find the inverse of that equation. Just see if you can find it. Uh, and then see if you can express it in such a way that if you just plug it one into the other, like this, that you will wind up with x as a result. So when you have these inverse functions, sometimes you can uh, learn more using those inverse functions than you could with the original function. Sometimes the solution to problems is only expressible in inverse functions. So um, that's something to think about. Hopefully you, uh, my my scrabbling on this piece of paper kind of in circles. Uh, it's kind of hard to do with the camera, but um, hopefully that's been valuable to you, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you again next video.